Good morning everyone. I am T Dubey. The title that you see on your screen, Objective English Easy to Hearts Part 1, is the name of my newly published books. Objective English Easy to Hearts Part 1 and Part 2. Both these books are available on both Amazon and Flipkart. You can get these books from there. In these books, I have written some researched approaches, some new methods of learning and teaching English. With the help of these new methods and approaches, anyone can get mastery over English language quite easily and can speak, read and write this language quite fluently. Besides, with the help of these new approaches that are written, here you can see names of some of the techniques in front of you. You can solve any question given in question papers at school level examinations or college level examinations or even in competitive examinations such as SAC, Bank PO, Management Examinations or you can apply these approaches in teaching English. In my classes, I am showing how you can apply these methods and approaches that are written in these books. This is my 14th lecture that I am giving on Objective English Easy to Hearts Part 1. And in this class, I am going to begin a new chapter of grammar that is Participles, which is a very, very important chapter for students to know. But I would advise you to complete all the chapters before this one, beginning from class 1 to class 13. Because only then you can create a body of this whole techniques that I am talking about. In this class, I will be talking about the conceptual part of participles, present participles, past participles perfect participles, dangling participles. So let us move to today's class, concepts of participles. So here we are, unit 1.7 participles. Let's begin with rule number 66. Let's understand what this rule says. Let us read and understand the concept of what participle is. A participle is a form of a verb which ends with ing, d, ed, t, en and does the work both of a verb and an adjective. It is also called a verbal adjective. So what we understand from this, how participles end. So these are the ending letters or you can say suffixes and it can work both as a verb and as an adjective. Finally, it is written that a participle is called a verbal adjective. In simple words, we can say a participle is a verb which functions as an adjective or in other words, it is an adjective made from verb. Consider these examples. How? Never try to get into a running train. Concentrate on running. Whom should I show? My broken heart. Concentrate on broken. Shamley felt like a caged bird. Concentrate on caged. So this running was is describing train noun train therefore it is an adjective broken word is describing noun heart therefore broken word is an adjective here and caged word is describing bird therefore caged is an adjective in this way we can say that running broken and caged are participles because they are made from verbs but are acting like an adjective moving on to rule number 67. It reads, a participle can be followed by an object or complement and it can have one or more adverbials. 
The participle together with such phrases is called a participle clause. What does it mean? Let me explain you with the help of the examples given. We saw some children playing chess. My friends are good at managing events. Cut above the right eye, the boxer retired hot. So here playing word is followed by chase which is object. Managing is followed by events which is an object. And cut is followed by a complement above the right eye. So here participle is not coming as a single word. It is coming in a group of words. So these words objects and complement make the participle a clause. So a participle along with its complement, object or complement or adverbial is called a participle clause. So the concept of participle clause or participle clause must have become clear. I think so. Now rule number 68. It says a participle can sometimes have a subject. Have a look at these two examples. It says So this example says, it being a rainy day, we decided to stay at home. Everything being in proper order, I felt happy. So here participle being has a subject, it. And in the second example, the participle being has a subject, everything. So this rule says that a participle can have a subject also. Now look at rule number 69. If there is no subject, then it is normally understood to be the same as in the main clause. What does it mean? Let me explain with the help of examples. Shouting at children, Mrs. Boss came out. Walking along the street, I saw Malini. Being an informed citizen, I am telling you this. So now the rule says that if there is no subject, so in each of these examples, there is no subject before shouting, walking and being. Then it is normally understood to be the same as, the in, <coughs> as in the main clause. So here, the subject of shouting is Mrs. Boss. And in the second example, subject of walking, participle walking is I. And in the third example, subject of being is I. So this rule means that if there is no subject before the participle, then the subject of the main clause is considered to be the subject of the mayor, considered to be the subject of the participle. Hope you are understanding. So this rule means that if there is no subject, as you can see here, there is no subject. Then it is normally understood that the subject of the main clause is also the subject of the participial clause. Hope it's clear. Moving on to rule number 70, it says sometimes we can use an adverb before the participle. Let's consider these examples. A well-trained player is an asset to the team. A specially designed diet plan will work. You must submit a completely filled form. So in these examples, the word well, the word specially, the word completely, these words are adverb. So it shows that a participle can be described by an adverb. A participle can be described by an adverb. Like well, specially and completely are adverbs which are describing trained, designed and filled respectively. Moving on to rule number 71. It says Verbs like go, lie, run, sit and stand can be followed by a participle to refer to two actions happening at the same time. So when we are talking about verbs like go, lie, run, sit and stand, it means they can refer to actions, two actions. How? Let us see. Consider the examples. These examples. Everyone stood watching the aircraft. People ran screaming for help. 
they sat staring at each other so here stood and watching are happening at the same time means everybody is standing also and watching the aircraft here running and screaming are happening together and here sitting and staring are happening together so when we use verbs like stand run and sit in that case it refers to two actions happening at the same time hope it's very clear now moving to rule number 72 which says the verb go plus active participle is used to talk about activities that we do out to do that we go out to do go out to do especially leisure activities that means the activities that we do in free time let us consider these two examples my wife loves to go shopping with her friends so here go is followed by leisure activities which is shopping some tourists went riding yesterday so here went is followed by riding which is a leisure activity so the verb go plus active participle is used to talk about activities that we go out to do especially leisure activities now let us move to rule number 73 now consider rule number 73 it says certain verbs are followed by an object plus an active participle so first of all we will get some verbs those verbs will be followed by object and then active participle will come consider these examples have a look example number one i saw her talking to a young man can you smell something burning? Nobody noticed them leaving the party. Early watched his grandchildren flying kites. A teacher observed them climbing over the wall. And we listened to them whispering something. So in each of these examples, the verb saw is being followed by an object her. And then participle talking is coming. Smell is being followed by something which is the object. And then burning is coming which is the participle. Noticed is being followed by the object them. And then the active participle leaving is coming. Early watched his grandchildren flying kites. So here verb is watched. His grandchildren is its object and flying kites is the active participle. A teacher observed them climbing over the wall. So here verb observed is being followed by the object them and then the participle is coming. We listened to them whispering something. So here listened to is a phrasal verb which is being followed by an object and then this active participle has been play, placed so from this rule it becomes clear that some verbs like saw smell notice watch observe and listen to are followed by an object then the participle is placed so keep this rule in mind I hope it is very very clear to your mind <coughs> now we are moving to important discussion of the chapter important uses of participles so here we will be discussing what are the uses of the present participle the past participle perfect participle or even dangling participle so understand each rule very carefully look at rule number one it says present participle the verb that ends in ing is used as an objective complement yes these two terms present participle 
and objective complement need to be understood by you very clearly. So, so far as the present participle is concerned, it is a verb plus ing combination like speaking, raining, training. So, whenever a participle is made by ing, this participle is called present participle. Hope the concept of present participle is clear. Now, let us understand the term objective complement. This term, objective complement. Look at these examples. My wife caught me talking to my secretary. So, here the verb caught is being followed by an object me. And this present participle has been placed after the object. So, when the present participle is used after the object, listen to each word spoken by me very carefully to qualify it, to modify it. The participle is called objective complement. Why is it called objective complement? The participle is called objective complement because it has been used after the object to complete its meaning. If this participle is removed from here, then the meaning will be my wife caught me, which will not give very suitable meaning according to the sentence. So, this complement will make the meaning of the verb object complete. Consider the coming examples. The beggar found the wallet lying on the ground. So, here wallet is the object and lying on the ground is the participle which is describing the object which is completing the meaning of the wallet. Therefore, lying on the ground will be called objective complement. Do not waste your time arguing with me. So, here your time is the object of the verb waste and it will be called objective complement. They saw the thief picking the tourist's pocket. So, here thief is the object of the verb saw and it is functioning as the objective complement because it is completing the meaning of the verb and complement together. We watched her performing on the stage. So, here her is the object of the verb watch and performing on the stage is the complement of the object. So, in English we have two types of complements. Subjective complement and objective complement. A subjective complement describes the subject. For example, I am a teacher. So, here teacher is describing I. Therefore, this it will be called subjective complement. Or if you want to use another sentence, you are a student. So, here student will be called complement of you, which is the subject. So, when a complement describes the subject, that is called subjective complement. And when a complement describes the object, it is called objective complement. Hope the concept of objective complement is very, very clear. Now, look at rule number two. It reads, a present participle is used to talk about two short connected actions that happen one after another. Consider these examples. These examples are often used in speaking good sentences, in writing and of course in competitive examinations. Reading the newspaper, Mr. Sinha came out. Barking at the stranger, the dog chased him. Whistling to himself, he walked down the road. Putting on her hat, she left the party. Scolding the children, the teacher let them in. So, these bold parts of the sentences are present participle. And in each case, 
if you concentrate on each participle then this present participle is connecting with the main clause means mr sinaha is reading the newspaper and coming out so in this way this participle has been used as a conjunction a connector so sometimes when you have to synthesize synthesize sentences means you have to use two sentences together participles are used to synthesize this is called synthesis of sentences likewise barking at the stranger the dog chased him that means the dog is barking at the stranger and running after him also chase that means run after whistling to himself he walked down the road so he is whistling also and he is walking down the road also putting on her hat she left the party so she is putting on her hat also and walking out of the party so in this way we can say that present participle is used to talk about two short connected actions that happen one after the other hope you are understanding it without any difficulty now moving on to rule number 3 a present participle can be used in place of a phrase beginning with as since and because so these three conjunctions as since and because you must be knowing are used to give reasons to express reasons that means in these examples participle is being used to show reasons how let us consider and understand feeling bored i began playing computer games so as i was feeling bored or because i was feeling bored i began playing computer games so here participle has been used as an adverb clause of reason or you can say it is replacing the conjunction as being poor he cannot afford such high fees the sentence means because he is poor he cannot afford such high fees the third example my friend not being at home i came back the sentence will mean because my friend was not at home i came back and the last example says he whispered thinking her parents were around so he whispered because he thought that her parents would be somewhere around her so in this way participle can be used to replace a clause or phrase beginning with as since and because hope you are understanding moving on to question to rule number 75 so rule number 75 is talking about the uses of the past participle past participle you know is the third form of the verb and because it is a third form of the verb it can end with d e d and en and is used for an action which is com completed before another action so you must keep it in mind that when you are talking about a present participle you are talking about an ongoing action and when you are talking about a past participle you are talking about a completed action or the action that has been already done let us consider these examples deceived by his friends he committed suicide terrified they fled from the scene let me explain these two examples so first says he was deceived by his friends therefore he committed suicide so this action of deceiving is complete i repeat the action of being deceived is complete therefore the past participle has been used terrified they fled from the scene so this past participle terrified terrified shows that the action of being terrified is complete and then they are 
running away from the scene. So the past participle is used to show completed action and then the other action begins. The second use of past participle is the past participle is used as an absolute phrase. It cannot be changed. Means this. The fog having lifted the plane to cough. That means you can use having lifted or having done. It's called absolute participial phrase. So the fog having left the plane took off. The sentence will mean after the fog disappeared, then the plane took off. The train having arrived at the platform, the passengers began getting out. The sentence will mean after the train arrived at the platform, the passengers began coming out of it. So the past participle is used as an absolute phrase also. In that case, you have to use the word having. You have to use the word having and then the past participle. Hope it's very, very clear. So we have discussed uses of present and past participle. Let us discuss uses of uh, the perfect participle. First of all, let us discuss how perfect participle is formed. Rule number 76 says, the perfect participle, the past participle with have is used for connected action, completed actions. So when we use have with the past participle, that past participle becomes perfect participle. Let us understand it with the help of given examples. Having finished my dinner, I took a cup of coffee. So here finished is past participle and before that having is used. So when you are using having, having before the past participle, it is called perfect participle. So having finished my dinner, I took a cup of coffee. Having, look at the next example. Having delivered the letter, he left immediately. So this delivered word is past participle and having has been used before it. Therefore, this entire bold part will be called perfect participle. Note, sometimes participles are used as idioms or it is called idiomatic uses of participles. Let us see. These are often used idioms. Frankly speaking, I do not like your attitudes. So here, frankly speaking, is an idiomatic use. It means you cannot change either of the two words. You cannot change frankly with clearly and speaking with saying. Here, these two words will come together. Likewise, things do not look good. But having said that, I am optimistic. So this part, having said that, has acquired an idiomatic structure. It means you cannot change any of these three words. You have to use having and said and that together. So if a change is made in any of these three words, it will be called grammatical mistake. Moving on to next example. All being well, we will be able to meet our target. So here all being well is the idiomatic use and idiomatic use of participle. Thus, we have completed uses of the present participle, past participle, perfect participle. There is one more use over here, one more example here. You can consider, we can consider this also. Check. Talking of politics, I have no interest in it. So this is again, this is not, uh, this is idiomatic use. Now this participle number, rule number 77, 
is very very important as well as interesting have a look and try to understand what the rule is saying very very important from a writing point of view examination point of view and for good knowledge of grammar this rule says when a participle occurs in a sentence but does not seem to modify a noun or pronoun it is called a dangling participle so if you have to define the concept if you have to define the term dangling participle or if you have to explain what dangling participle is in simple words you can say a participle that does not describe or modify any noun or pronoun in a sentence so it keeps dangling dangling means hanging so such a participle is called dangling participle and if a participle is dangling it is a grammatical mistake so how to correct it see here i have given some examples very good examples for you to understand consider these three sets of examples being pitch dark i could not see her so if you get a sentence like this being pitch dark i could not see her you will feel that this sentence is grammatically correct no it is not can you try why it is not correct because if we consider this correct then we have studied earlier that if there is no subject of the participle then the subject of the main clause will be considered the subject of the participle means here the subject of this verb and subject of this verb is same i so if you consider the sentence being pitch dark i could not see her the sentence will mean i was pitch dark means the speaker himself is a pitch dark so he cannot he could not see her so the meaning of the sentence will become wrong therefore you need to keep a subject so you look at consider the next this part here it has been used now it becomes clear it being pitch dark i could not see her so the subject of this being is now it so this participle is no more dangling it has got a subject it has got a pronoun to modify likewise you consider the next example the next example says standing on the stage a scorpion stung the man now if you consider this example it will mean that the scorpion was standing at the gate and the scorpion stung the man how is it possible how can a scorpion stand so because a scorpion cannot stand at the door at the gate it cannot sting so the sentence intends to say that a man was standing at the gate when he was stung by a scorpion in that case what you need to do you need to reorder the sentence look at its correct part here a scorpion stung the man so scorpion stung the man so here the man is coming as the man is coming after the stung and this man is getting the participle standing at the gate so if i simplify the sentence it will mean a scorpion stung the man the man was standing at the gate or a scorpion stung the man who was standing at the gate so the scorpion is standing is 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 uh, uh, stinging the man who is standing at the gate scorpion is not standing therefore the correct sentence will be the this now look at the next example and then i think your concept will become far more clearer 
flitting from flowers to flowers i watch the bee flitting is flying so the sentence will mean if you consider this sentence to be correct it will mean i was flying flower to flower and then i was watching the bee that means i was jumping from one flower to another and i was watching the bee which does not make much sense i think how can you jump flower to flower you are a man so you will have to reorder the words i watched the bee flitting from flower to flower so this bee is flitting flying from flower to flower not i so the sentence becomes correct if the words are given in proper order so this is the concept of dangling participle so hope all the four different types of participles are complete by now it is time to understand sure fact shortcut trick number 7 so far whatever we have read it has been encapsulated in sure fact shortcut trick number 7 let us read and understand it it says you know that a participle is a form of a verb that may function as an adjective because it is a verb so it is a verbal adjective we have studied it you have also studied that participles clauses are formed using present participles going you have also studied that participle clauses are formed using present participles like ing form past participles the third form of the verb and perfect participles means having gone having read and we have also studied the dangling participles so as a student you must keep these four different types of participles in your mind and then try to ask yourself if a question is set on participles what will be the areas where will the question frame frame the questions you can understand it by keeping these three points in mind if the past participle that is the third form of the verb in simple language so if the past participle is used for an ongoing action then it contains an error second point the second point that you need to keep in mind is if the present participle is used for a completed action then it contains an error and if there is no subject before a dangling participle very very important so if there is no subject before a dangling participle like being it a rainy day i decided to go out or i decided to stay at home so here being it a rainy day is a dangling participle you must keep a subject before it it being a rainy day so these are the main areas where questions are framed on participles now in the next class i am showing you how to analyze all the four sets easy moderate difficult and high order thinking skill questions using this sure far shortcut trick number 7 and if you can retain these concepts in your mind i think you can very well no most of the questions well before exam you can try on other questions so let us begin analysis of practice sets